Welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name is Jenny Senapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink, get a snack. Today calls for two. You have my permission. <laughs> and we'll get started. Today I have Earl Grey tea and some strawberries. So let's get real. I am going to tell you about one of the bravest things I've ever done and what I learned from about myself, maybe, <laughs> in this podcast. So Several months ago, I was invited to a wedding, a wedding of a great friend. Um, her son was getting married, and she has been a constant cheerleader in my life for um, more years than I can even count, over 10 years at this point. She worked with me at my former job, and when I was having a bad day, she'd bring me a cherry Coke or some chocolate, even one day, both. I mean, she has really been a constant cheerleader in my life and is one of the reasons that I actually wrote my book because she, I sat down with her to lunch one day and she was like, honey, you need to write this book. And I was like, no, I don't have time, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, no, really, you need to write this book. And so she's just been that. So I wanted to go to this wedding for her just to be a support and show her that I care the same about her as she does about me. So I RSVP'd and said I would be there knowing that Kevin's out of town and I could have brought Samantha, but I thought she doesn't need to go to a wedding at like what 16 year old wants to go to a wedding that she really doesn't know the people. And so I just said she could stay home and have popcorn and watch a movie, you know, whatever she wanted to do. So I signed up to go to the wedding by myself. And I was like, okay, this is not a big deal, right? Like I can, I can definitely, I do things by myself all the time. It is um, part of the journey that I've walked through because when Kevin's on the road, you go to church by yourself, you, you do things by yourself. That's just part of, I go to conferences by myself. Like that's not, that was not the big deal. So that's not Jenny being brave. There are two things that made this Jenny was brave, okay? Um, number one, it was a semi-formal event. Now, what does that mean? Google it because it's very confusing. It can mean a gamut of things. And I was too nervous to text my friend, and I should have just texted her and said, really, what's the dress code? Like, can I wear leggings? <laughs> I should have done that. But instead, I fretted and I got some anxiety and never even went shopping because I don't own dresses. That's not something that I have in my wardrobe that is part of my life. Um, I'm not really a dress kind of girl. I try to buy them and then I try them on. And if I can't return them, they end up going to savers. Like I just am not very good at wearing dresses. It's just not who I am. I have one dress that I used to wear to my former job at a specific event every single year. And that's the dress that I've kept because it's kind of a cute dress, but I didn't want to wear it because that's what I wore all the time. And this happened to be a wedding that was involved in my former job. So it is two, a mo two both the moms, the mom of the groom and the mom of the bride, are friends that I worked with at my former job. And so I knew that there would be people from my former life there. And I was freaking out. I was completely in like, they don't know what I'm doing with my life. They, you know, are they not going to like me? Are they going to hate me? Like, are they going to, you know, I have no idea. I have no idea how people feel about me. It, I kind of put my head in the sand and pretend that everybody loves me. La 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 la. <laughs> Until I have to go to an event. And so I actually don't even, now this is going to be like raw. The place that I used to work is about 20 minutes from my home. And it is a really great town and everybody loves it. And they've got some really fun things there. I don't go to the town. I will drive around the town to not have those memories dug up for me. Like it is really weird and I know it's something I need to face, but I was going to face this event first, right? Um, I was going to face this and I was going to do this. So I went to the wedding. I did it all by myself and I wore my dress and looked adorable according to my daughter because she's a truth teller. So... <laughs> I looked adorable and I went to this wedding and I saw people 
not as many as I thought because it was a very small wedding. So I was very privileged to be able to be invited. And I, really, that's how I felt when I was there. I was like, I am so lucky that I was I'm allowed to be here on this day and be part of this new union and just be there to support everybody that I knew. There's so many people there from my past. And it was a very interesting and healing time for me. So I've been talking for several months on this podcast about trying new things and being adventurous and I'm doing that as much as I can. And, you know, I'm taking baby steps here and baby steps there. This was not a baby step for me. Like this was a big deal. And I went in full force and had a wonderful time. I really did. I could not believe how, um, it was easy just to get back in and check in with people and see how they're doing and just love them for who they are and feel like they loved me for who I am. And all that junk and all the politics and all that kind of grossness that I felt like maybe was still going to be there was gone. And I even got to see people that were much younger than I was because I worked in a school and they were some students and I got to see them and them all grown up and, you know, find out how they're doing and find out their new goals and dreams and um, what's happened so far in their life. And it was just such a full moment circle kind of thing. Full circle moment. That's what it is. Full circle moment. And I got home and I actually didn't even sleep that night because I was processing so many of my feelings I didn't even know I had. My insecurities that I have kind of just held on to and didn't realize I had anymore. And so I just wanted to encourage you. I've been doing this for a couple weeks now, encouraging you to step outside your comfort zone. I knew this wedding was coming up and I knew that I would be doing a podcast about it. But I have to be honest with you, I wasn't 100% sure that I'd be talking to you about positive situations. Um, (laughs) Because I just knew the craziest stuff happens, right? Like life is not fully scripted. And you don't know what's about to happen. Like it's fully scripted in God's eyes, but we have no idea what we're walking into most of the time. You know, you think you know the path and then something's closed off and you got to go down a new path that you're like, this is really uncomfortable. And that's what I was worried about. I mean, I was so worried about this wedding that I was trying to figure out ways to get out of it. I'm like, I really like her and she's a fabulous person, but how close are we? Like, (laughs) will she notice if I'm not there? You know, I'm just like, all these crazy scenarios were going on in my mind that I was trying to not do this. And I ended up doing it anyway, because I knew that it was important. You know, there are just certain things in your life that you know, let's just bite the bullet, go for it and do it. And I'm telling you that it was an amazing experience and a really healing time that I just realized that my past does not define me, that I know that I'm a very different person than I was when I worked with a lot of these people. I am a very different person than I was six months ago. Like I've been growing and learning and trying to change and I love people a lot more than I did six months ago. I love people a lot more than I did four or five years ago, like I've been changing. And so I know that you are doing the same thing, that you are growing and developing and you are changing. And there are times in our lives where we see people from the past and it's a negative situation, right? They're like, oh, you were so thin back in the day. Okay, I get that all the like, I was never thin, by the way, but I've had people like, oh, I remember you were really thin. Huh? And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. Like, (laughs) like what do you say to that right um I've also had people say yeah you haven't changed a bit just you just look older but and you're like okay it's just you don't have to say anything don't if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all um (laughs) that's my my mom's advice to me and I really believe it I feel like it's a biblical thing You know, even a fool is thought wise if they keep their mouth shut. That is one of my mottos. So if I don't have anything nice to say, I'm not going to say anything. Like, okay. And that's just not the way people are in your past. Sometimes people are like, oh, I heard you had a really rocky road. 
and you're like, no, actually, I don't remember a rocky road. And, you know, they bring things back to you and they remind you of things and they trigger things in your life. And I knew that that could happen. But God was so gracious to say, Jenny, you're going to take a step outside of your comfort zone. You're going to go to a wedding by yourself. You're going to dress in a way that you don't feel comfortable in a dress. And you're going to see people that you don't see on a regular basis and that you're afraid of and that you've been living in fear from for over four years or three years now. You've been living in fear and I'm going to break that for you. And that evening, God just brought to my mind as I was trying to fall asleep about, I felt like he was taking the chains and breaking them and crumbling them into bits. Things that have held me back as far as my fear. And so my next thing I'm going to do, and I know this sounds crazy, is to go to that small town and I'm going to go to the McDonald's and get an ice cream cone because I used to do that all the time when I worked there because they have the best ice cream cones up there. And I'm going to go up there just for no reason, just to say that I'm not going to be led around by my fear anymore. Um, I've been doing that for a couple things now, and I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing. There are things in our lives, and I'm not talking like spiders and snakes, like let them be. You don't need to go like start spending time with spiders and snakes. Okay, like those are real. Those are real things. <laughs> Not that your fear is not weird, but don't you don't have to do that. But there are fears in our lives that we have let control so many pieces of our lives. And I want to encourage you to not only pinpoint what those really are, because I have to tell you, I did not pinpoint my fear of going to this wedding until like the day before. I just knew I was afraid and anxious. And it was like the day before that I was like, Lord, why am I so afraid of this? Why am I so anxious? Why is this kind of throwing me into a tailspin. And I brought it to the Lord and I said, why is this bothering me? And he was like, well, here's why. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Now I need to conquer those fears because my God is bigger than fears. And I can step into things with his strength. And so I'm going to encourage you to do that. You may be in a situation that you have anxiety or fear over something and you know why. And so it's time to step into bravery, right? I have a sign in my um, room that I do my podcast and it says, he makes me brave. And it's a song that I played for when I was doing kids ministry and I played it every single week. And it's about God makes me brave. I'm not brave without him. I am a puddle of misery and anxiety, and God makes me brave. He will help me take one step. He is not like, hey, Jenny, let's jump across the Grand Canyon today. He's like, let's walk down one step at a time, and I'm going to be there with you. And I'm telling you, God will be there with you. So if you're afraid of something and you don't know why, I pray that I ask you, not pray to you, I ask you to pray to the Lord and bring it to him and say, Lord, why am I anxious or worried about this? What's happening? What is going on here? Is this you saying don't do it? (laughs) Because I'm not telling you to go jump out of a plane, right? Is this God, are you telling me not to do this? Or is there something that I'm fearful of that you can help me conquer? And so that's my encouragement to you this week. I encourage you to bring your fears or your anxiety to the Lord and say, hey, why am I afraid of this? And is this something we need to conquer together? Because he will walk with you. He will step beside you. He will break those chains one chain at a time. I know that God can do amazing things and he can break an entire row of chains. But for me that night, he broke three or four chains and I felt the relief of the fear no longer going to um, cause anxiety in my life and that I can give it over to him because he was like, I'm going to break your chains one link at a time. Well, you can find me at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram, Be Real and Facebook. And you can also find me at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. All of my info is there. I know God's great, got great plans for you and he's got an amazing adventure for you. But we have to give over our anxieties and worries and ask the Lord why they're there. Lord, why am I anxious? Why am I worried? And he will point that out for you. And hopefully you will come on the journey with me and start doing some adventurous things and facing one fear at a time. Have a wonderful week.